Hey, Stevie Young here doing the Junkyard Crawl with help from my friends at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. This is a great example of how the Junkyard can be a classroom as much as it can be a place for cars and trucks to come and die. This is a 1960 Dodge D100. This is a 1961 Dodge D100. Similar, but so very different. Now we all know, of course, that this family of Dodge truck goes back into the 1950s. Uh, similar in the sense that they have quad headlights and a front bumper, but that's really where it all ends. The big thing here is that while these have a hood that's narrow and fenders that have a shelf type thing, for the second gen or for this generation, the hood goes all the way to the sides of the body. And beyond that, a very convenient, work shelf is seen on both sides of the engine bay. By contrast, on these, there's a lot of wasted space. The tops of the fenders aren't really useful for anything, and the inner fenders on these things not friendly at all for putting tools down on. But if we look at the frame, we'll see how it tapers in toward the front, and, uh, and how the shock absorbers are high like that, and the leaf springs have the shackle at the rear. Uh, in other words, they're fixed at the front, and the hanger and the shackle, the articulated part, is at the back. But over on the totally new 1961, we'll see again that the frame is actually much wider. It doesn't taper in at the front nearly as much. That's all about accommodating big block engines. It's true that 413 and 426 wedges, four barrel engines, not max wedges, and 383s and 361s were all absolutely possible in the 61 onward Dodge D100 pickup truck, whereas these ones here were strictly polysphere and um, antique V8s, no big blocks. But again, we mentioned how the shackles on that are at the rear of the leaf spring. Well, here in 61 up, Dodge moved the shackle toward the front. And that's helpful in maintaining stability. And uh, basically the, the wheelbase doesn't change when you hit the brakes as much. It doesn't want to dive and, and, and squirt the axle forward. Not that it's a big deal, but the Dodge engineers clearly thought it was worth uh, modifying and changing. Of course, we have quad headlights as we had on these through 1964. I think they went to circular singles in 65. But again, this is our first year, 1961 Dodge D100 pickup truck. And this here is a brochure from 62, the second year for the Dodge truck. And we can see right there, this is the top level truck with the chrome bumper, chrome grill. By contrast, this one here is a very basic fleet truck with a painted grill, painted bumper. And inside, the big thing, again, is that drop frame. And you can see right there where underneath the cab, the frame goes down low, which brings the height of the truck lower than it would have been in 1960 and earlier. And the cab and the hood, we can see on the, that right picture, easier servicing. The hood goes vertical on the 1961 up, which makes it much easier for people to work on it. But here's the funny thing. Uh, the old body style lived on a little bit after 1961. And where? Well in the town panels. We can see on the right various versions of the panel. The nose was the same stuff used in 1960, uh, but again for the pickup trucks and bigger trucks the new styling, the swept line styling was the rule. So these two live side by side, but when it comes to pickup trucks, 60 is the final year for that stuff, 61 is the first year for this stuff. Now we continue our little tour here and we'll notice that the lines of this come down and have a sweep to them. And in 61, these actually were part of the Dodge Dart brand, believe it or not. 1961, the only year that the Dodge pickup trucks were Dart. In fact, the wheel covers, we can see one of them right here. They were shared with low-line Dart passenger cars. Here's one from this truck right here. So it's kind of weird. Most people think of a Dodge Dart. You think of, uh, you know, the, the high school stoner's car, 1965, 67, 68, the compact Dodge Dart. But you got to remember, 1960, 61 too, the Dodge Dart Phoenix, the Seneca, uh, those were full-sized cars. But under that umbrella of Dart, so too were these trucks. And they shared that styling, which is kind of odd. In fact, if you look at that hood right there, that's the hood from this 61 truck. Those fake louvers that are pressed into the skin of the hood. Those were also seen on 1961 Dodge Dart Seneca passenger cars. So again, the styling 
touches, the themes that were consistently used from top to bottom in the model line, absolutely brought this into the, uh, the Dart fold. But again, just as Valiant was its own line in 1960, it became the Plymouth Valiant for 61. Dodge shuffled things, and of course the Dodge truck lost its Dart nomenclature for 1962. Although with that said, I've never seen a 1961 Dodge pickup truck with the word Dart on it anywhere, but factory paperwork and corporate papers do show the word Dart in 61. Now these do have uh, a very useful cab, similar wraparound windshield as 1960, but these no longer have the dog leg. Speaking of dogs, this is our new mascot right here, Lockjaw. He's very quiet, never bites. I love him, doesn't eat, very quiet great little dog. Anyway, we can see here where the, the A pillar has a slant to it like this. Meanwhile, let's take a little walk and try not to break our ankles to the other truck and see how different that cab is. And we can see where the wraparound windshield was pretty modern for the time when this came out in like 1955, but the windshield has this strange reversed A pillar and this dog leg, this thing right here, that you could bonk yourself on getting in and out. Now, of course, Dodge trucks weren't the only one. 58 Chevy, all the GM cars had this weird dog leg, as they call it. But inside this here, you can see a pretty austere cab, you know, similar styling. Dodge didn't change too much inside, although the new cab was lower, and that was all about that drop center frame. On this one, the frame is pretty much horizontal to the ground and the cab sits much higher, which, you know, made it easier for the 61 driver to get in and out, whereas this truck, you'd have to do a little more climbing to get in or out. Now, this one does have the, the swept side bed, not a, uh, a step side with the bolt-on fenders. This is a half-ton D100. And always, I like to say, the holy trinity in pickup trucks is short bed, half-ton, two-wheel drive. That's always where the money's at. I mean, at least for popular consumption. And this is a short bed, two wheel drive, half ton 60 D100. And this one here is a short bed, half ton, two wheel drive 61. And they're similar, but not the same by any stretch. And again, this family of trucks would go on through 1971. And for 72, a totally different design would replace this one with coil spring front suspension versus the leaf springs used here. So Dodge, like all truck manufacturers, made changes and evolutions from year to year, decade to decade, and generation to generation. And this here is a great example of how Dodge went from this in 60 to this in 61. And of course, Dodge today, the Ram truck line has never been more popular. Cummins diesels, the new Tornado six-banger coming along apparently for next year, turbocharged Charging. Of course, the Hemi Dynasty is still very much in effect. So uh, Dodge Ram trucks, or Ram trucks as we call them, no more Dodge, are still very strong. And these are bricks in the chimney to help get Ram where it is today. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag YouTube channel. And we'll be back tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawlers.